Hey guys, Keith here with Gat Daily, and today we're going to be talking about accurizing the IWI X95 Tavor. Now there's a lot of information out there on the X95's inherent accuracy, and a lot of the information that says that the X95 is an inaccurate rifle isn't properly put into context. The X95 is an accurate rifle, but it is a more challenging rifle to shoot, and I'm going to go into why. So, a little while back, I took the X95 out against other rifle platforms, and I shot it using stock 55 grain cheap ammunition, uh, just PMC and Federal ammunition. And as I was shooting it, I was getting between two and three minute of angle pretty averagely. So, the X95 was printing a two to three minute of angle group with 55 grain ball ammunition. The Rifle Dynamics AK was printing between two and three minute of angle with 55 grain ball ammunition. My M16 quote unquote A5 was printing between two and three minute of angle with 55 grain ball ammunition. The LWRC SBR M6 IC PSD that I've got with its eight and a half inch barrel was printing between two and three minute of angle with 55 grain ball ammunition. I think you might sense a pattern there. So once I got the comparable results with 55 grain out of uh, the one in seven twist guns, I started looking at what the accuracy challenges of the X95 actually were. And it basically comes down to three things. Number one is the small frame. It's a short rifle and that inherently makes shooting it a different animal. And when I mean short rifle, I mean the length from the end of the stock to the muzzle on this is only 23 inches. It is a short rifle. On the LWRC, even with the stock in one position from uh, full length and a five inch shorter barrel, this still has two inches in total length on uh, where its muzzle sits compared to where the X95's muzzle sits. The X95 is a very short rifle. So that small frame on the rifle does present an accuracy challenge. And the reason is the length from your shoulder to the end of the muzzle. The closer, the shorter that is, the more challenging the rifle is going to be to shoot because the movement of your body, the inherent movement in your body every time you shift your shoulders is going to move the muzzle of the rifle more. It's the fulcrum length. You only have 23 inches to work with, whereas on an M16 you have 40. That matters. The amount of support you can provide to the rifle in that length, it matters. So all those little movements on the X95 get magnified. The trade-off is you keep muzzle velocity. The uh, final thing is the X95's trigger press. The trigger on the X95 stock feels almost like a double action pistols trigger because it's built very differently from a conventional uh, rifle trigger, especially if you're coming from the AR-15 platform. IWI also put some things in the trigger design of the X95 for reliability and redundancy that do contribute to the challenge of mastering the trigger. And it's part of the reason why it feels like a double action trigger press. So four things you can do to improve the inherent accuracy that you're getting out of your X95. First and foremost, we'll get the easy one out of the way. Use heavier grain match grade ammunition. There, I said it. Use good ammo, your accuracy is going to improve. If you use the heavier grain weight, which is a longer projectile inside the round, the one in seven twist barrel will take advantage of that and you will get better groups, especially if it is match grade across the board. You have better jacketing, you have better overall uniformity in the formation of the round. A better round is going to fly better. That's the easy one though. Second, you can quote unquote free float the barrel of the X95 and you can free float the barrel on the X95 a lot more inexpensively than you can free float uh, an AR-15 barrel. So taking a look at a M16 uh, with a conventional Knight's Armament forehand, to free float the M16 itself, you would have to disassemble the entire upper receiver down to the barrel nut and remove the barrel. So muzzle device has to come off, gas block, which is pinned, has to have the pins removed, that has to come off, gas tube has to come out, uh, the handguard itself obviously has to go away, the handguard retention cap has to go away, the delta ring, the spring, and the barrel nut here all have to go away. You have to disassemble the entire thing. You then have to buy a new handguard and barrel nut. You have to buy a new gas block. Um, might as well get a new gas tube at that point in time. 
And uh, if you want to change out your muzzle vise, that's a good time to do that too. So it's a complete front to receiver reassembly to go from a non-free-floated rifle design to a free-floated rifle design, and you're not getting that much extra inherent accuracy out of it, especially if you're not using good accurate ammunition. This with 77 grain match ammunition is a very accurate rifle. It's one of the reasons that it was used as a squad designated marksman rifle in the Army for a while. The Army has since bought H&K M110A1s because they couldn't let the Marine Corps be the bougie one with the H&Ks, so that's a thing. You don't need a free-floated barrel in order to have an accurate platform, but it does help because you are removing outside stresses on the barrel. Now, a true free-floated barrel means that the only place that the barrel interacts with anything else is back here at the receiver. It's locked in with the barrel nut. The only thing it is interacting with, the only thing uh, putting any sort of force or tension on it, other than the barrel nut itself, is the gas system. That's the only other thing that the barrel is touching. That's what a free-floated barrel means. Now with the X95, you can't truly free-float the barrel because the top rail is attached to the barrel directly. The barrel of the X95 is kind of the spine of the whole gun. But you can remove two tension points that are on the front of the barrel and provide it kind of a quasi, a semi-free float. And the nice thing about free floating the X95 is it doesn't cost $400. It costs like 30. The downside is you have to find a specific charging handle in order to do this. So first things first, you have to remove the polymer locking collar that's at the front of the handguard. That collar helps index the handguard and helps make the handguard itself, the quad rail, the plastic part, more rigid. It doesn't affect, it doesn't influence the uh, top rail at all. The top rail is attached to the barrel. All it does is sit here and index the front of the quad rail on the rifle. That way the front end is a little more rigid. You're using a, a foregrip or when you're putting tension on the quad rail itself, that tension is directly translating to a degree to the barrel. This does have some give in it, it does have some flex, but again, as the barrel heats up, the metal gets a little more pliable and you're gonna be able to influence it and put a little more tension on it. And especially when you're talking about longer distance accuracy, any bit of tension, any bit of flex in the barrel is going to influence how the round flies when it comes out of the gun. By uh, removing that, you're removing the most forward indexing point, the most forward pressure point that you can put on the X95's barrel. On top of that being a, that it's a polymer quad rail to begin with, I wouldn't put any zeroable items like a, uh, a D-ball or anything on that quad rail to begin with. So if you're running a light on it or if you're running a uh, grip on it, it's not going to matter that the rail itself is a little less rigid. So step one, easy, pop this guy off. When you take the handguard off, you will see it attached to the barrel in a little notch that's cut into the barrel. Uh, you can just pop it off by hand, it's not hard. Now that being said, if you want to keep it because you prefer the more rigid quad rail, that's fine. It is by far the least important aspect to accurizing the X95. It's the thing that matters the least is free floating. Step two of free floating the X95 is changing out the charging handle to the older generation. The new generation X95 charging handles are leveraged and the reason they're leveraged is so that you can get a stuck case out of the chamber without having to mortar the uh, X95. Mortaring, if you don't know, is when you have to put some tension on the charging handle and slam the buttstock of the rifle into the ground to get a stuck case out of the chamber. I've had to do it on AR-15s. I had to do it on the X95. It's not a big deal, but this design change with the charging handle gives more leverage on it in order to get the stuck case out. This is also called a cocking bar, but I'm just going to keep calling it a charging handle. But the reason the new charging handle has to be removed isn't anything to do with the charging handle per se. Collar here indexes around the barrel. While the new generation charging handle gives you greater leverage for getting a stuck case out of the rifle, uh, because this indexes around the barrel, it puts additional pressure on the barrel. And if you want to remove that pressure and get the uh, free-floated accuracy out of the barrel, it needs to go away. The older generation charging handles, the straight ones, do not index off the barrel. They don't have that uh, T-collar. They just ride in the side slot here. You don't get the additional leverage, but you do remove the tension point, the second tension point that's forward on the barrel. So by doing these two steps, by removing your polymer locking collar 
and going back to the old style charging handle and getting rid of this T-collar, you remove the two forward points that you can put tension on the barrel. Again, the barrel isn't truly free-floated because the top rail is directly attached to it, but it's as close as you can get on the X95 platform because the barrel is the spine of the whole gun. By doing those two things, you limit the external places that you can put pressure on the barrel as much as possible. The next thing you can do to accurize the X95 is the obvious one, replace the trigger. The stock trigger on the X95 isn't a bad trigger, it's just challenging to use because of how it's designed. Because it is a bullpup and because of the mechanical complexity of the bullpup and connecting the trigger through a transfer bar back to the trigger pack, it's a more complicated mechanism than uh, you find on an AR-15 or an AK trigger, which has all the mechanism in one little space. So the stock trigger of the X95 has a trigger return spring. It has a separate spring from the uh, mechanics inside the trigger pack that return it forward. It doesn't rely on the trigger pack to push the uh, trigger shoe back to the forward position. It has its own spring for that. And that increases the effective pull weight of the trigger as you're trying to uh, break your shot. That increased pull weight increases the complexity of keeping the rifle still while you're pressing the trigger because you are exerting more force on the gun. That's what I mean when I say that the trigger has a double action feel to it. It feels like uh, pulling back on a, a SIG 226 or a Beretta M9 trigger. Now the easiest way to correct this is to spend some money on a new trigger. This is the expensive upgrade. The Geisley trigger packs aren't cheap and the Lightning Bow isn't exactly a super cheap product either. However, I do highly recommend both of them. They are very, very good at what they do and I'll explain why. First, before I go any farther into the trigger, be sure that you watch the barrel disassembly video from IWI because you're gonna to have to pull the barrel in order to reach and remove the trigger. Watch the barrel disassembly video. It goes over in detail what you need to do. Otherwise, follow the directions step by step, very detailed in the manual. If you don't follow directions and you try to remove the barrel with the charging handle still inside the gun, you will crush this charging handle and you also might crush your gas cylinder. Ask me how I know that. The Lightning Bow itself replaces the stock trigger and therefore it replaces the, uh, the trigger return spring. The trigger return spring is gone entirely. It's not part of the Lightning Bow setup. The Geisley Lightning Bow is designed to work with the mechanics of the Geisley trigger pack. As you're installing the Geisley trigger, the uh, Lightning Bow itself, you'll notice that it rattles a lot back and forth because it doesn't have the return spring putting tension on it. How you tighten it down and how you remove that play Put the safety of the X95 on, put it in the safe position. Now there won't be a trigger pack or anything in the back of the gun because it'll be completely disassembled at this point. So throw the safety on and slowly tighten the screw that uh, puts tension on the back of the trigger until it's not any torque on it, but it's snug up against the uh, body while the rifle is on safe. After that point, you're not going to have a lot of play, and you can, you can adjust it back down if you want to, but you're not going to have a lot of play in the trigger when you uh, switch the rifle again to fire. There's not going to be a lot of forward and back travel. When you install the trigger pack and you put the entire rifle back together, you'll feel what the springs do and how it turns it into a uh, two-stage trigger once it's working with the trigger pack. If you don't want to buy both pieces, focus on the trigger pack and not the lightning bow. You'll still get advantages by going to the Geisley trigger pack and you'll get a really nice trigger press by going to the Geisley trigger pack. You just still have the uh, trigger return spring and the stock trigger that's adding some tension and some movement to the trigger press. Once the lightning bow is installed, do make sure that you set your retention wire to make sure that your trigger pin itself doesn't walk Changing to the Geisley trigger pack is really straightforward. You pop the two pins on the back of the rifle, take the old trigger pack out, put the new trigger pack in, uh, two pins back in, trigger's installed. Easy. Between it and the lightning bow, you will notice the two-stage feel to it now. It's going to feel a lot closer to the uh, super semi-automatic triggers that Geisley is known for in ARs, SCARs, ACRs, stuff like that. It dramatically improves the trigger pull. If you spend money on upgrading the X95, it is my number one recommendation, is upgrade the trigger. You will appreciate the better, cleaner trigger press. 
the biggest benefit you're going to get from upgrading the trigger is limiting excess movement that you're imparting to the rifle. Again, the movement you impart to the muzzle is already magnified to a degree because the rifle itself is very short. So by going to this lighter two-stage trigger with a lot less travel, by getting both parts of the Geisley trigger pack or Geisley trigger set for the X95, you are going to limit the amount of motion that you are imparting onto the X95 and you will see an accuracy benefit from that. And finally, the most important thing you can do to help accurize your X95 is pay attention to supporting the rifle. It sounds dumb, it sounds like, well, no duh, but because the rifle is so short and because it's laid out differently and because in its stock configuration, it has a different trigger press, all of those things combine to make it a more challenging rifle to shoot and the accuracy downrange will show those results. If you pay attention to supporting it properly, if you pay attention to the fundamentals, you'll see the accuracy come back. Now, the X95, just like a small handgun, is very unforgiving of mistakes, especially a small double action handgun like Walter PPK. The small rifle in its stock configuration is not as forgiving of mistakes as a longer rifle because the longer rifle hides the mistakes better. So the trade-off for size is the handling characteristics. They're less forgiving. However, you keep muzzle velocity high, which is very, very important, especially in a 5.56. So that said, guys, I uh, hope this has explained some of the accuracy concerns with the X95. I hope it has allayed anyone's uh, possible misgivings about looking at the X95 as a rifle just because you've heard it isn't accurate. Again, the rifle is plenty accurate. It's just a little more challenging to shoot.